Bonjour tout le monde, j'espère que tout le monde va bien. Alors, bienvenue dans, dans cette séance sur l'agroforesterie qui, je pense, est la, la première séance d'agroforesterie euh, officielle au colloque du CEF. Donc, euh, c'est signe que l'agroforesterie est en, est en développement, en croissance. C'est une bonne nouvelle. Mon nom est euh, David Rivet, donc je suis professeur à l'Université du Québec en Outaouais et chercheur euh, à l'ISFAR, à l'Institut des sciences de la forêt tempérée. Donc, euh, pour cette première conférence, nous avons le bonheur d'accueillir euh, Hang Xiong Song, qui est chercheur postdoctoral à l'Université du Québec à Montréal sous la direction de Chang Lui Peng. Alors, euh, Anxiong, je, je vous laisse la parole. OK. Uh, sorry that uh, I cannot uh, speak very much French, so I just uh, go with English. Hopefully you guys can understand. And uh, it's my real pleasure to be here for today, to share my work, to uh, exchange some ideas with you guys. And uh, I'm uh, from Wukam, and uh, uh, hopefully we can, you know, enjoy this. OK. So uh, I'm going to present this uh, with following sections. So first, uh, nitrous oxide, or N2O, is one of the most important greenhouse gases with the strongest global warming potential, which is about uh, 300 times larger than that of carbon dioxide. A uh, growing atmospheric concentration of N2O can lead to ozone depletion, uh, jeopardizing both environment and human health. Generally, N2O is produced as an intermediate product uh, from nitrification and denitrification processes driven by uh, soil microbes. So observations have reported that atmospheric concentration of nitrous oxide has rapidly increased by 20% since the Industrial Revolution. The development of agriculture is probably res responsible for, that, for such a growth because agriculture soil has been identified as the strongest into a hotspot as a result of a variety of management practices. And IPCC have proposed that agriculture might account for more than 60% of the total anthropogenic nitrous oxide emission. However, to date, uh, the process and the spatial temporal variation of the N2O emission have not been fully understood, and it's difficult to be monitored across large area uh, with current technology especially for the agriculture cropland ecosystems. So therefore, modeling is essential to, to be used uh, to understand the, and quantify the N2O emission in different scales. Process-based biogeochemical model is widespread due to the ability to describe the microbial related nitrous oxide emission in a more detailed, more realistic way, such as very famous uh, Denitrification and decomposition model, which is called DNDC, and other models shown in this table. However, most of this model cannot simulate agricultural emission very reasonably. Among them, the triplex greenhouse gas model has a great potential to be further improved for a better estimation of the N2O emission. So the objective of this study is as follows. So first, to develop agriculture practice models in the framework of an extend process-based model, or triplex greenhouse gas model. So it's a development. And next, we're going to conduct a sensitivity analysis to identify the most sensitive parameter. So the next is uh, sensitivity analysis. And the final, uh, final objective and the most important is to validate, to test the model results using the field observations uh, from various uh, cropland sites at global scale to make sure the model is re reli reliable. First, I want to introduce a bit about triplex greenhouse gas model, uh, which is a, a process-based biogeochemical model consists of, an, uh, of a land surface module, a plant physiology module, a vegetation dynamics module, soil biogeochemistry module, uh, and methane and tool production modules for current version. And the management modules uh, have, has been incorporated into the original model structure to make sure that uh, we can simulate the uh, cropland N2O emission. Major agriculture management are designed 
for model improvement based on published papers and, and other empirical model results. So I will just uh, skip here to save some time. And uh, if you guys really interested in, please uh, do ask me during the Q&A section, okay? And uh, as for the model input data, uh, our model require climate data, uh, environmental information, and uh, management information. So first, climate data, we chose the uh, uh, CRU dataset in daily time step to drive the model. Environmental input data is associated with uh, soil information and vegetation mostly. And measurement uh, practice information, which is very important for current um, model, um, uh, those uh, practices are highly varying as controlled by individual farmers. So therefore, the global data set can have large divergence uh, compared with site uh, observation and experiment. So for the site level calibration and validation, we use the uh, management information from published papers. So overall, we have uh, 39 sites were selected for our model calibration in daily time step to compare for sure. And we have uh, 70 sites for model uh, validation in global scale uh, to test the model performances. So now, uh, sensitivity analysis of the model parameter is very important to find the most sensitive parameter or parameters for further calibration to save some time to improve our working efficiency. So we found that uh, um, the coefficient of nitrate consumption rate for denitrification, which is the first step of the denitrification process, had the highest sensitivity level for the updated version of the triple X greenhouse gas model. So because the uh, nitrate consumption rate for denitrification is very difficult to be uh, to be measured directly in the soil during the experiment. So the limited field information could affect the potential uncertainties of the parameter, which further, uh, you know, um, uh, drive in the uncertainties for our model performance. And here, uh, because of time limit, I will just brief some of the site level calibration results. And I will also introduce the, the advantages and disadvantages of our model. So overall, the model performed quite well in terms of the visual evaluation and um, um, model performance indexes. The mean value of the agreement of the of the agreement index, which is D value, uh, is above 0.7, which is quite good actually. Um, the uh, closed red dots in this in, in those figures uh, are measured flux data obtained from uh, published papers. And the blue line here are the modeled nitrous oxide flux uh, obtained uh, by triple X greenhouse gas model. So first, the dominant characteristic of the cropland N2O emission is the peaks associated with fertilization event, most of which were well simulated by our model and uh, uh, contributed to the overall uh, reasonable evaluation index. We can see here with the four, pic with the four pictures that um, the modeled N2O were well consistent with the measured value, especially for the timing of occurrence of emission peaks. The model is benefited from the detailed description of the soil oxygen, actually. Both the soil oxygen conditions and the soil water conditions were considered in the triple S greenhouse gas model, represented by the size of the anaerobic bloom, which is a conceptual idea, and the water field per space, which is uh, WFPS, respectively. Field study found that soil oxygen uh, condition is a uh, proximal, direct, and the most decisive environmental trigger of the nitrous oxide production. Other process-based models just use WFPS as an indicator for both uh, oxygen status and uh, water status, which is not that realistic because you know, it's um, quite different between them. Uh, so that, um, that kind of uh, measurement could uh, probably result in large uncertainties for their assignment. And uh, in comparison, our model promote this, improve this, and have a better uh, model performance. Uh, next, our color, sorry. Next, uh, our calibration includes some experiments 
uh, which just used manual application only and showed a reasonable model performance comparing with previous other studies. A uh, detailed description of the manure contributed to uh, this improved performance because manure is a predominant soil organic carbon SOC source for cropland, which is not considered by other empirical models and several of the process-based models like descent or visit. They just consider the manure as the same as a chemical fertilizer, which is just a nitrogen uh, source while they just ignore uh, the organic properties and the carbon properties of the, the manure, which could lead to some uh, uncertainties and uh, you know difference uh, between the model results and their uh, observation. Well, on the other hand, uh, with this study, the manure sourced carbon was recalculated using the manure nitrogen and CN ratio of different uh, soil organic carbon pools uh, in our model, uh, which significantly enhanced the simulation of the SOC. And SOC produces DOC, which is the very important for soil microbial growth and uh, uh, can serve as a um, substrate for nitrification and denitrification. So in general, the manual input effect is well simulated by our model. Thanks, Jan. Yeah. Sorry. And there is one minute yeah. remaining for your presentation. Okay. So uh, I don't know if you want to conclude or. Yeah, I'm just uh, show some uh, you know uh, limitations of our model. So it's just a basic view, and I will just one minute. Thank you. One minute. Uh, so that we have some limitations here, as shown uh, uh, with these four pictures. Uh, which uh, include under, underestimated emission peaks and some miscapture of the emission peaks uh, and underestimated background emission. And those, uh, you know, limitations can be further improved with uh, further uh, studies. And actually, we have done, uh, make some uh, progress there. And I want to make some conclusion. Uh, yeah, uh, our validation results is quite good. And uh, with the seven sites validation, we have a very close um, results with the observed data and the simulated data, uh, which is very close to the one-to-one -one line. So uh, in general, our model can simulate the impacts of both climate and agricultural practices on the N2 emission across global cropland ecosystems. So that's our most important uh, conclusion and maybe a take home message. So with the, uh, in the future, maybe we can use our model for uh, large scale, uh, you know, uh, estimations to to provide some, you know, scientific uh, basis for policy making, you know, something like that. So I think I'm sorry for the uh, time, and uh, I think now that that would be all. Merci. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. I would appreciate if you may uh, stop oh, the sure. sharing of your screen. For sure. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Alors, on va pouvoir prendre euh, des questions après les trois présentations. Donc, on aura euh, une quinzaine de minutes pour euh, ouvrir la discussion puis prendre des questions pour nos euh, conférenciers.